Hey guys, welcome back. Robocraft Early Access coverage. This is episode 59. I'm Enigmius, and today we're starting in on the armor for the Panther Bee. Last episode, we finished prototyping all the components. We got them pretty much where we want them. And now it's time to protect the bot and make sure everything connects properly and do all those things. The final stages of the preliminary build. And then obviously, once we start taking it into real matches, we'll get some pretty accurate feedback on how well we designed the bot and obviously we'll have the opportunity to come back and make changes if that's what we want to do what I'm doing here before we start with the actual you know prisms and all those other good things is just kind of taking a look at the chassis that we prototyped with all these white blocks and removing anything that is is just kind of it was there it was left over from a previous connection just tidying up so that we don't confuse ourselves in terms of the things that are important that we want to keep and the things that aren't now we have as always, a limited supply of tier 10 blocks, and you can see we're going to alternate. We're going to start building with them, and then we're going to go and we're going to put them under a lot of the components, and then we'll come back and we'll build with them, and then we'll go put them under the rest of the components. It's just the nature of the beast. If you're assuming a bot that's got 500 blocks on it, which is not uh, at all unrealistic for the kinds of builds that I do, that's 6 million RP worth of tier 10 prisms if you were buying them all because you didn't have them. In our case, We've got a number of them tied up in the pretty hate machine. It doesn't make sense to pull them off that bot and put them on this one because it's good to have multiple working bots in tier 10. You earn RP faster that way. But it does mean that a lot of our builds uh, wound up wind up being kind of largely purple for the time being. That's just the way it is. So you can see we're putting some of these uh, tier 10 blocks under the legs. Uh, under the guns, all these other things. With the anti-gunbrella stuff, you don't have to worry about damage transferring through the legs to the blocks underneath, but it's still... That's that's how the, the component is connecting to the bot, and you don't want to make it any easier than is, uh, you know, possible for the enemy to shoot those blocks off. So that's why we're occasionally breaking off to go and put them under more components. There are a number of different things that, since the last episode, that have kind of changed on the bot as I've been building out. It's not complete yet, I can tell you that. We're not working through old footage for a bot that I'm already trying out in matches. But it sat long enough in the garage that there have been a, a number of changes that I've made because you have an opportunity to rethink how things are working, why you originally planned on doing things a certain way, and how they actually work out in the practice map or in your own head. Uh, one of the things that I can tell you at this point is that the rudders are gone. All of the rudders are off the bot. One of the things that I found as I was messing around in the practice map and we have the two thrusters on the rear of the bot so that if we're moving forward it will help us come to a stop sooner. We can just jam on reverse and it will, we don't have to worry about overshooting corners and going face first into like five enemy bots, things like that. But we pulled the rudders off the sides of the bot so the only rudders that remained were on the back end and then I was messing around with it and I hit reverse and the bot did a backflip. And I thought, what the... We just solved that problem on the front end by removing the rudders because after you know five or seconds going forward it like to do a little flip as soon as we try and reverse we end up with the exact same problem in the opposite direction so what's going on and it has something to do with the proximity of the rudders to the thrusters I don't know if it's because they're really close and the rudders are higher I, I haven't had a chance to do the kind of testing that will give us the exact reason but it is related to the position of the thrusters related to the rudders and I just didn't have time to screw around with it anymore. I just said, we're not getting that much benefit out of the rudders that I want to keep messing around with this when it's basically putting ourselves in a position where the bot becomes uncontrollable after just a couple of seconds in a particular direction because of the way things are working. So the rudders are gone. And also, the front end that you'll see us build out in this episode is going to be trimmed down a little bit in, next ep in the next episode. You'll be able to see exactly how I did it. There's nothing major. But one of the concerns that I had is that it was very, very bulky on the front in terms of the weight and in terms of also how much CPU we were investing on the front end of the bot and how much that was leaving us for the back end of the bot to finish out the armor. So there's going to be some changes if you're kind of following along and things aren't working to your satisfaction. There's always some adjustments that you can make based on your preferences. But understand that, you know, by the time you see the, the bot finished, it's not going to be going into its first matches with rudders. And the nose is going to be a little bit thinner. Now you can see we've got most of the components now are sitting on tier 10 blocks so we can get back to the front armoring. As I mentioned previously, one of the things with a rail vehicle 
it's very very easy to kind of um, visualize in your head what kind of situations you'll intentionally put yourself into with that bot now when it comes to a rail bot that's gonna be sitting up on ledges shooting down at people is if things are working well and things are working according to plan the front of the bot and the guns on top of the bot are gonna be what's taking all of the punishment so we, we definitely want to invest some thought and some effort into making sure that the front of the bot is as robust as possible while also accepting the reality that just because that's the way we want it to be doesn't mean that's the way it's always going to be we're gonna get flanked we're gonna get shot from behind all kinds of crazy things are gonna happen so we don't want to have too much CPU and too much weight tied up in the front end because that means we're gonna end up weaker in other areas one of the, like I say one of the, the things that I noticed with the spider bee mark II is that there are a lot more bots especially SMG hovers that are climbing up mountains so to speak onto ledges and flanking rail bots they can do it very quickly they can do it very easily and it puts you in a very very bad position in terms of your ability to, ability to survive especially as always with rails if they catch you when you've just fired your last shot and now you're waiting on a reload it's it's not a very good situation to be in and it's not very fun so what we need to be doing is making sure that you know we're protected for the situations we expect to put ourselves into and we're also protected as best as we can for those situations that other people are going to put us into so that's kind of what we're doing here we've got most of the front done now in terms of you know what the enemy is going to see and what the enemy is going to be shooting at initially now we need to really be focusing on the connections to the rest of the chassis this is kind of one of the things that I've learned from experience, if you overlook this step after you build a big chunk of armor onto your bot, you're going to watch that armor get knocked off time and time and time again because your connections are probably, at a first glance, not going to be as strong as they need to be. So we're looking at making sure that we have multiple connections and that those connections are as strong as they can possibly be. It's very, very easy to do that with the armor core kind of approach. It, it's nowhere near as tedious to try and do it as it is with like the old school Triforce but it, you have to be thinking about it and you have to kind of follow through with the thought process and not just kind of say, eh, it won't be that big of a deal. We've got enough armor on here. No one will ever get to that part of the bot because Plasma says you're wrong. That's <laughs> just the way it is. Plasma makes us wrong about everything when it comes to trying to predict where we're going to take damage and how much damage we're going to take. So making sure that you have enough armor is the first step making sure that that armor is properly connected to your bot is the second step and then you can kind of take a look at it after the fact and say we can we can afford to trim it down a little bit here we can afford to bulk it out a little bit here it doesn't have to be a one-shot deal with the building there's always room to look back on it and say it seemed like a good idea at the time but it's actually not really living up to what we expected so we're gonna we're gonna make some changes and that's kind of the whole thing we're almost done actually building out the front end. The front end actually wound up being very, very symmetrical because we're only building around one gun. And when it comes to things like thrusters and mobility of that nature, I saw someone who actually built like a banana bomber. It was like a, a bomber that was bent like a banana on the horizontal plane, which was really, really cool. I never really saw an opportunity to kind of test something like that. I didn't think there was a video posted to show whether or not it was actually something that you could control with that shape. Regardless, the point being, when it comes to mobility and things that direct your bots in terms of speed and also direction, we don't want to do too much with a lack of symmetry in that regard. There are plenty of other areas where we can mess around with the symmetry, but we want to make sure that in this case, we're building our own thrusters, we're building in front of legs. The thrusters and the legs are symmetrical because they're important. So the front the front of the bot is basically symmetrical. So a lot of what we're doing here is building on one side, then mirroring it over on the other. It's not that big of a deal, but one of the things you'll notice is the front of the bot is very red. And this is what I'm referring to when I say, right now at this moment in time, that entire chunk of armor on the front of the bot isn't even connected to the chassis. So now we've literally just made one connection and that's all we've got holding this bot to the chassis. Guess where that connection is and guess where can very easily hit that connection? The plasma, right? Splashing up from the ground. 
before we're done here with the front of the bot and getting everything done and taken care of, we're going to be adding more connections. We're going to connect from the top, from the sides, making sure that if one connection gets blown up, we've got other connections to hold things into place. It's probably one of the most, well, it, it, it is the most important consideration whenever you're talking about armor. The armor doesn't do any good if it falls off the first time someone shoots you. So in addition to how big it is, how thick it is, how many how many armor blocks there are, whatever electroplates you have, it's making sure that it stays on the bot when you start getting shot. It, it's a big wedge right now on the front of the bot, and my concern, building it, looking at it, messing around in the practice map, is that if, if we are indiscriminate in terms of how big we allow it to be, we're going to end up in, in kind of dire straits later on when it comes to time to control the bot while hovering or while kind of throwing ourselves off high ledges so that we can relocate whatever so we'll do some we'll we'll, we'll do some tripping down in the next match right now you can see we had that one connection now we're building it out so the bottom has multiple connections even though they're all still going to that one connection at the back end of this kind of big chunk here there's multiple connections there and now we can worry about building out connections on the top and on the sides it, it won't be as bad as it is now. As long as we're thinking about it, as long as we're aware of it, as long as we're including it in our design philosophy, it's a, it's not an unmanageable challenge, but it is one of those things that you'll notice if you didn't do it right, and you'll notice in an awful hurry. So we're just kind of building out now to give some protection to the sides of the thrusters. And in the process of doing all this, one thing that we're doing a very good job of is protecting the connection points for the front legs. Like if you're trying to shoot through the front of this bot to get to the legs, well, first of all, just shoot at the legs and <laughs> it'll be much easier if that's your goal to get them off. But we don't have to worry about that particular section of the bot getting shot off quickly and easily from the front because we've made that front wedge so wide. Now we kind of have to manage our CPU because if we if we don't, uh, we're going to get about two thirds of the way towards the back of the bot and we won't be able to add anything else. But you can see we're already kind of, this is an ideal testing because the weight distribution on the bot is completely off. Even if we were using the weighted cubes, every time I do a build with the prototype and the white cube, someone asks me, why don't you use the weighted cubes? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter until the bot's complete anyways. We're not going to be able to get an estimate for the weight or the balance or any of that. But you can see it, it wants to tip forward. It definitely wants to tip forward. Once we get the back end filled out the way we want it, we'll have a much better idea of how well the thing's going to handle. I don't think it's going to be that big of an, itch, an issue. I think when we trim out the front a little bit and we make sure the back end is filled out, it should be okay. The next episode, like I say, we're going to work. We're going to continue on the chassis. We're going to start with trimming out the front end, and then we're going to work the middle section. Before you know it, we'll have a brand new bot that hopefully does well in tier 10 matches so that it'll start earning instead of costing millions of RP. If you want to be notified when I add those videos, you can always uh, subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on the social media. Links for that are always in the information section below the video. Please leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.